Hey, what's up, y'all? I said the entertainer. I want y'all to check out Pick TV Network. That's right, Pick TV Network. They got 60 free channels on Roku. This is dope. They also start in the brand new Coaching World channel at $9.89. So, if you are a content provider, you are a young business with an opportunity to build uh, something, a platform where you can have your own show, do some programming, check out Pick TV Network on Roku. They got over 60 free channels for you to check out and also grow a business. Go and see them now. See the content. See what they have to do. Learn something. Check them out. All right? Big TV Network. That's what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. <sighs> We've all been hurt at some point. Even abandoned. Many of us have done the hurting ourselves. We get to the point where we don't trust anyone. Nor do we feel worthy of being loved by anyone. Then, there's that one person who just doesn't give up on loving you. Their love is unconditional. Their love stays long enough for you to heal. And then, they promise to never leave. That's love you can count on. God's love. Hello, everybody. This is David Evans, President of Pick TV Network. Listen, all of you watching around the world, I have a special presentation today on the network. I have some of the greatest preachers in the whole world. First of all, Bishop Lanier Twyman. How you doing, Doc? Hey, how you doing, Doc Evans? How you doing? All is well on my end. Man, I'm doing good. This is a historical night for the Pick TV Network because we're getting ready to bring on some special guests who... I love great preachers of the gospel, and we know Bishop Kelsey. Everybody loves Bishop Michael Kelsey today. How you doing, Bishop? I'm doing fine, Dr. Evans. Good to be on. Yes, sir. And then we also have the Bishop Brown, the miracle <laughs> preacher right there. Man, and, and we're excited. Um, Bishop Twyman, there's a big event coming up, and I want you to tell everybody about this big event and to invite everybody about to this big event. Come on. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Evans. Hey, listen, all roads lead to the gay Lord for the 30th anniversary of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship International. I'm telling you, we're excited. Uh, the, it, it is going to be memorable. It's going to be epic. It's going to be powerful preaching, powerful singing, powerful teaching, powerful ministry and great fellowship of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship at the Gaylord, July 5th through the 7th. I'm telling you, you need to be there. Yeah, I know it's going to be amazing. You know, I, um, I love, you know, the Full Gospel Baptist Fellowship. Bishop Kelsey, 30 years is a long time. And, 30 uh, years is indeed a long time. And uh, it, that's how long Full Gospel has been in existence. That's what we're celebrating uh, next year, 30 years of ministry, of fellowship, of kingdom advancement, of impacting uh, lives. And it was in 1992 that Bishop Morton approached Bishop Otis Floyd at the National Baptist Convention uh, about what the Lord had placed on his heart uh, concerning bridging the gap between Pentecostal and Baptist. And those meager beginnings is what God used and the faith and vision of Bishop Paul Sylvester Morton. Uh, and 30 years later, Full Gospel is still thriving, serving, expanding, and impacting people for the glory of God. I'm excited to be a part of it. You know, Bishop Brown, when you come to the fellowships, and we always have a good time, man. I, I hug you for like five minutes, man, because we, we, we see each other and then we share that love. When people come to the DMV, you know, they're coming from all across the country. I was over at the Gaylord today. I, I did some events over there. When they come into town, um, let these people know what they're going to get when they come to D.C. and to the conference. Well, obviously, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Evans and, and Pick T uh, TV for allowing us to come. 
uh, and obviously I give honor to uh, our leadership here, Bishop Twyman and Bishop Kelsey, our spiritual leader, father as it is in ministry. When you come to the DC area, as we refer to it here at Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship, uh, the region, obviously the Mid-Atlantic region uh, that shares the uh, District of Columbia, Delaware, Maryland, and Pennsylvania, all will converge as well the International Fellowship. But when you come to Washington, D.C. area proper, uh, to the harbor, to the Gaylord, you're going to be greeted with excellence. Well, that's how Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship operates, in excellence, the spirit of excellence, as Bishop Kelsey and Bishop Twyman have already uh, alluded to. You're going to come and you're going to experience the power of God resting on you like never before. This is an opportunity that you don't want to pass up. You want to be in the place for the 30th year. It's a reunion time as well. Uh, persons who started with our fellowship and the Lord has led them in different directions will come back and converge right here. And we're going to have an epic time together uh, with power and, and the explosion of the Holy Spirit resting upon our people. You know, B Bishop Kelsey, you know, um, I, I wanted to ask you about the first time is coming to D.C. You, you, we've been in New Orleans, packed out uh, 20,000 people. I remember when the first fellowship started, I was there. You were there on the stage with pe preachers all over the world. I remember one, one of our good friends, Bishop Noel Jones, he preached. Other great preachers came and preached. Talk about Bishop Kelsey. This is coming to D.C. This is history for the conference coming to D.C. And some of the speakers are going to preach. Well, you, you, you said it right, Dr. Evans. This is history. That's really the emphasis. Uh, this is history, and this is a family reunion. We have never come together like this in 30 years. Um, uh, we've never come to uh, Washington, D.C., in the 30 years of our existence. Uh, so this, in fact, uh, is history. It's history for a number of reasons. It's history because founding fathers whom God used to start this fellowship are also coming back. They're going to be coming from around the country. Uh, Bishop Carlos Malone, Bishop Kenneth Omer, Bishop uh, Andy uh, Luder, uh, I started calling names. I don't want to leave. Bishop A.R. Williams, Bishop Larry Trotter, Bishop J.D. Wildley, uh, co-founder Deborah uh, Morton, uh, of course, Bishop Paul S. Morton, founding fathers. Uh, that has never happened on this level before. Uh, we're we're going to open up uh, that um, six, uh, what is it, 640 or so on Wednesday. Uh, with Voices of the Region, and that will be Bishop Edwin D. Brown, our state bishop of Washington, D.C., who's going to be our first voice from the region. That's called history. That's called never happened uh, before. Pastor Diamond Gant, right from this area, from St. Stephen's, uh, Bishop uh, Lanier Twyman, she's going to be preaching on Thursday after noon. Uh, a young woman, great preacher, uh, and a daughter, a true daughter of the fellowship. She was a child coming up in the fellowship yeah. and now is doing great, great, great things. Of course, on Thursday night, our Founders Night, Bishop Paul S. Morton is going to be preaching, uh, my spiritual father and pastor, and Bishop Twyman and Bishop Brown's spiritual grandfather uh, and, and presiding bishop. And then Friday, you really don't want to miss, uh, during the day at 10 o'clock a.m., this is history. This has never happened before. We have had Bishop T.D. Jakes as the night preacher, and he's known around the country as being the night preacher for conferences. He has never come to full gospel to do what he's doing. It's called Live Full X, Mastering the Intersections of Ministry and Marketplace. He's doing that on Friday morning at 10 o'clock. Never happened before. Uh, uh, and then Bishop Walter Scott Thomas is going to be our preacher for the uh, 1130 a.m. service. 
And then we're doing something not only have we never done before, watch this, it has never been done before. And that is a uh, full gospel has developed a political agenda, uh, a comprehensive political agenda. And we're having what we call the caravan for justice, uh, where we are going through the leadership of Dr. Delman Coates. Uh, we are going to be boarding buses and traveling to various political leaders' offices, uh, uh, congresspersons' offices, at, uh, Capitol Hill and otherwise, uh, to hand deliver our political agenda. Uh, never happened before with us, and it's never happened before for any Black reformation uh, uh, on this level. And we're excited about it. And then lastly, Friday night, founding father's moment is Bishop Greg Davis and Bishop Kenneth Robinson, two founding fathers as well, and Bishop Joseph W. Walker III, our international presiding bishop, will be bringing the final message Friday night at seven o'clock. I really could easily go on and on and on, but uh, you, you can just it, see, it. you would want to be in the place. You know, I think the beautiful thing, of, of, of the beautiful thing about this fellowship, I can, I know Bishop Twyman has been planning and, and Bishop Kelsey, you've been planning and it's good for the whole DMV. Bishop Twyman, talk about other denominations you got, you, we don't have to go down the line, but you got Pentecostals, Apostolic, you got friends, Bishop Demery, you got a lot of friends who are going to be coming from other denominations. Talk about the welcome spirit of other churches, other fellowships in the DMV because that, that's welcome to come. It's not just for full gospel, but it's for everybody who want to come. Talk about that, Bishop Twyman. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Evans. There's no doubt about it. When you think about the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship, it is a fellowship and everybody is welcome. Uh, of course, uh, the whole premise of Full Gospel being founded um, has to do with the, the charismatic. So it's it's really one of the mantras is Baptists have a right to choose. And I think that at the end of the day, uh, Full Gospel has uh, so many different denominations within full gospel we've got we've got baptists they're charismatics there are non-denominational uh churches and so absolutely we look forward to welcoming and receiving brothers and sisters from all denominations who uh hold up the blood-stained banner of jesus christ being the way the truth and the life so we look forward to it absolutely i, I know that um several of our friends and colleagues from the DMV area have already committed to being a part of it and, and, and sharing. Uh, several of them are already registered who are not Baptists, um, who uh, may be Pentecostal or non-denominational and even AME. So we're really, really excited. Uh, again, that's really what the kingdom is all about. We uh, one Lord, one faith and one baptism. So we're, we're, we're excited about it. Come one, come all. Let's all lift up the name of Jesus Christ together. Bishop Brown, um, for the people who are coming to the DMV for the first time again, they're coming to the Gaylord Hotel. This is not no little red roof inn. This is not a little hotel on the side of the road. Let the people know when you walk into the Gaylord, it's like going into the pearly gates. Uh, <laughs> tell, 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 Mr. Bishop, tell them how beautiful this immaculate resort is. The Gaylord is not a hotel. It's a resort. And it's like a hotel with uh, a mall. And I just hope the saints don't get lost in there. So, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Brown, tell them about the, the, the five-star, beautiful place that they're going to come to at the Gaylord. Well, Dr. Evans, you just stated it. It's, it's five-star. Uh, it, it goes along with the uh, mantra uh, for gospel, doing things in excellence. Uh, and so having an excellent facility to facilitate opportunities really all allowing also everything to be done at one place. So once you've come, and if and I believe if I could even encourage if you are desirous of doing so and staying on, on property, I would I, I would check uh, that registration right now because once you're there, uh, there's the whole one side of the entire 
uh, resort and convention center belongs uh, to uh, Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. And so the movement and engagement there, obviously, uh, I guess um, you call it like like the pearly gates, <laughs> uh, uh, just a step below that, perhaps. <laughs> but but you gotta feel like what heaven must feel like as it relates to being uh, in a star uh, a five star facility, which again gives space opportunity, but allows us the opportunity to represent excellence to our God and to the world. Yeah. I think that's what full gospel seeks to do is to represent a God who's excellent and therefore the services are, and not by accident, but by plan, by intentionality, uh, we have come and we will converge. There are other things around, but nothing's going to be like the services and the opportunities for empowerment uh, as they gather. Yeah, I wanna ask Bishop Kelsey before we go to a break, you know, I've been known Bishop Kelsey almost 25 or 30 years. Bishop, you're a man of order, structure, time management. Uh, I remember uh, uh, there was a funeral at your church and the, the lady came in and said, I want this done. And Bishop Kelly said, no, this is going to start like this and it's going to end like this. And it started like that and ended like that because that's the way you are. And I love you. I want to also ask you, Bishop Kelly, for those who don't know, the spirit of, of Bishop Morton, the spirit of Bishop Walker, You've been in their presence. There's no egos. They, they, they hug you. They love you. They're not on the cloud. Talk about the spirit of leadership. Bishop Morton, you've been in his presence. Bishop Walker, that 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 spirit of love. Come on, Bishop Kelsey. Well, what I would say, um, Dr. Evans, is um, <clears throat> what fascinates me is that you can have two leaders who are very different and yet possess the same spirit. Yeah. Moses and Joshua were very different in terms of leadership style and assignment. But because their assignments came from the same God, then uh, you, you saw the same spirit in both of them. That's how it is with Bishop Morton and Bishop Walker. Um, <clears throat> three things that come to my mind with regard to both of them. One is that they're spiritual men. They're spiritual men. Full gospel is all about the Holy Spirit, all about the Holy Spirit. And they're spiritual men. Yes, they're businessmen. Yes, they're entrepreneurs. Yes, they're administrative geniuses, but they're spiritual men. Secondly, um, they are relational men. You mentioned, Dr. Evans, that they will greet you and hug you. They don't have to know you. You don't have to have a title and a collar and all that. That's not that's because that's not their priority nor their focus. Their priority is people. Their focus is relationships. That's why Bishop Twyman said, we're a fellowship. We're a fellowship. We're not a, we're not a business. We're not an organization. We're a fellowship that is spiritual and that is relational. Um, um, and then uh, thirdly, they are generous. Um, and I mean that in every sense of the word. Um, I, I have been blessed to be exposed to their level of generosity and their dimensions of generosity. Uh, not only are they givers financially, unparalleled givers uh, financially, but they give of themselves and they give of their talent and skill. They give, they give of their expertise. Uh, we have been invited to both of their churches. When I say we have done on the whole fellowship, have been invited to both of their churches to see up close and personal. Now, how is this done? And how did you do it? And what might we learn to bring back uh, and uh, customize for our contextual uh, assignments that, um, that would advance the kingdom of God? So that's what I would say about uh, both of them, Dr. Evans. I thank God for them. That's amazing. You know, I, I want to ask the same question to Bishop Twyman. and um, Bishop Walker just came for an event that you, with you and Bishop Paul Morton uh, did so many services with you. I want to ask you the same question, Bishop Twyman. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, my, my spiritual father did a fantastic job in uh, communicating uh, the attributes of those two phenomenal leaders. I, I do want to uh, reiterate, I think, the generosity primarily 
uh, because they actually came to St. Stephen's on their own dime. Uh, both of them uh, uh, paid a lot of times. That's really unheard of, you know, uh, people of their stature when they're when they're going places. You know, you 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 tend to have to cover the the bill, but uh, they came to St. Stephen's on their own dime and imparted to to all of us the fellowship in the uh, Mid Atlantic region, um, and it was a phenomenal phenomenal time. Uh, so again, they're kind, uh, approachable. Uh, I think that that's so. Um, you know, of course, we, we're talking about national leaders. Uh, in uh, Bishop Morton, our founder and our presider, Bishop Walker, but very personable. Um, of course, uh, I, I I got their cell phone numbers. <laughs> that's 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 major. I mean, how many? Yes, indeed. Yeah, how how many other uh, 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 bishops and other reformations have the presider's uh, telephone number? That's that's what it's all about, and I think that that. <sighs> Bishop Walker, uh, he shared um, when he took over, uh, when he uh, the, the mantle was passed to Bishop Walker from Bishop Moore, he said something so profound uh, in his um, presentation to us, uh, the leaders. He said, relationship is the new currency. And I, I'll never forget that. Um, and I think that it's so essential in the kingdom of God that that all of us have to be relatable. All of us have to be touchable. And um, both of them, Bishop Walker and Bishop Morton, um, show that uh, in and it's genuine. It's not it's not fake and forced, but it's it's genuine. It's it's authentic. And that's that's uh, another one of the reasons why uh, I'm connected to the full gospel Baptist Church Fellowship, because of relationship. No doubt about that. Everybody, we're going to take a com commercial break right quick. We are here on the Pig TV Network special presentation, and I have some of my great colleagues here and co-laborers in ministry, and I'm so happy again to be talking about the Full Gospel Baptist Fellowship coming to Washington, D.C. for the first time at the Gaylord Hotel, July the 5th through the 7th. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be five-star. Bishop Kelsey already lined out how the program is going to go. We put a lot of time and effort into it. We're going to take a brief commercial break. We'll be right back after this. Yes, you can achieve a college education right here in your own community. Harkham College's ACE program at the Deliverance Evangelistic Church offers associate degree programs that can help you land a good job and improve your quality of life. I like Harkham and Debbie because I can continue my education. The teachers are great. The atmosphere is great. It's all possible through I lead and Harkham. Call now or check out our Facebook page at Harkham College at Deliverance Evangelistic Church. They say your eyes are the windows to the soul. They're also the windows to your health because they let eye doctors see what's going on inside. Think about this. A comprehensive eye exam can be an early detector of serious health problems like high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. Shouldn't you see your eye doctor yearly? Go to thinkaboutyoureyes.com to learn more and for a list of local eye doctors. It could help save more than your vision. Hey, everybody. We're back here on the PIC TV Network. It's a special presentation today. I asked some of my colleagues to come in and talk about one of the greatest events that's going to hit Washington, D.C. with the Full Gospel Baptist Fellowship. 30 years, folks, is coming to D.C. And what I want to thank God for, Bishop Kelsey. You know, last time we were together, we were eating at a restaurant. And those ribs look good, Doc. You know, I, I, I got to say, I didn't want to eat those ribs until I saw yours. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I told the West here, whatever he got, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be careful with that, Doc. <laughs> no, 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 it, it, was, it was beautiful. Mr. Kelsey, when I, when I see your dedication and faithfulness to the fellowship down through the years, you know, you've been there, Doc, through the, through the stick, I mean, through thick and thin, you've always been faithful. Talk to somebody out there who, um, maybe looking at this broadcast, tell them how, is it, how it pays off to be faithful in what you do. Because you just didn't start 
with the fellowship two or three years ago. It's 30 years. Yeah. Well, I, I believe it, it comes down to being clear about your convictions and about the call of God. Um, I remember many years ago uh, thinking, now what, now this new thing called full gospel, what? I mean, you know, lots of new things come through town, if you will. And, 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 and I remember settling in on, this is God for me. This is God for me. And everybody that I talked to, that I talked to about considering full gospel, I wind up landing on, you know, now you pray and ask God, is this God for you and for your ministry? That's what allows me to be faithful. My conviction that I'm in the will of God. My, my, I, I'm crystal clear that I am where I'm supposed to be doing what I'm supposed to do. And that's why I do it the way I do it. So it's more about the faithfulness of God than it is about my personal, um, my, my personal faithfulness. Uh, my, my wife, you, you may, you may know Dr. Evans. My wife, uh, is Pentecostal by background. I'm traditional, ultra traditional Baptist by background. Um, and so when we got married 42 years ago, our challenge was, how, how are we going, how, how do we, how are we going to do this? Baptist Pentecostal, like for real Baptist and like showing up Pentecostal, you know, uh, and how are we going to do it? And, and the Lord led us to one Bishop Paul Sylvester Morton at the time. He was Reverend Morton in New Orleans, New Orleans. Uh, and, um, and the Lord made it clear. That's me. I'm putting together Baptist and Pentecostal in full gospel. And that's why it's going to work so well for you and your wife. And so when God does it, um, you know, things it's come together. Things fit. Things work. Doesn't mean the full gospel is is uh, without its imperfections. Uh, I don't know any organization. I don't know any reformation that has no kinks and no disconnects and no gaps and challenges. That's that is not even the point at all. The point is, it's God for me. And you, and you can't sum it up no better than that. It's God for me. Yeah. And to, to be faithful over a few things, God will make you, will reward you over many. You know? And I watched you down through the years and I love you so, so much, you know, being faithful and dedicated. Mr. Twyman, I want to talk about you being with the fellowship, um, being elevated while you're there. You know, Bishop Gavin, got to give a lot of love out to Bishop Gavin. I know he's watching this, man. Love him. Mr. Twyman, tell, him, tell everybody about your elevation. You St. Stephen's Baptist Church, and when you came into the fellowship and how the Lord blessed and elevated you, what does that mean? Yeah, absolutely. Um, of course, when, when, I, when I joined the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship, over 20 years ago, um, it was God for me too. It was um, it was a perfect fit, I think, for where I, I believe the Lord was leading St. Stephen's Baptist Church. St. Stephen's was a traditional church, um, um, but they were open to uh, a transition um, and a God thing. <clears throat> uh, I believed in the gifts of the Spirit. I believed in women preachers. Uh, I believed in uh, divine order. Um, and it was just a great fit for me and where I was taken, where I felt the Lord was, was leading me with the St. Stephen Baptist Church. And I joined as a pastor. I was a pastor um, and brought the church in. Uh, bishop Kelsey was uh, the state bishop of D.C. at the time, and he introduced me to full gospel, um, went to uh, a conference in New Orleans and was thoroughly blessed, impressed, inspired, uh, came back, uh, told the church, this is where I believe the Lord's leading us. Uh, Bishop Kelsey came in um, and really uh, did a, a teaching on what full gospel is all about. And we were in um, and we didn't, it wasn't, well, let me just go to another conference first. Let me see one more time and all that. When I, I heard from God, we, 
we went in and <laughs> filled out the application. It wasn't pastor only stuff. You can join full gospel that way, but I knew that it was what the Lord wanted us to do as a church. So uh, joined, uh, went to every conference, never really missed a conference um, because I knew that there was always something God wanted to share and tell me um, and not just tell me, but I started encouraging some of my members and my leaders to attend the conferences as well. Um, and being a part of full gospel, of course, uh, there is an international relationship. There is a regional relationship and there is a state relationship and even a district relationship within full gospel. And so again, you know, I jumped, I was all in. And, and I think that that's how we ought to be as uh, men and women of God, either you in or you out. Um, and I was all in. And of course, um, serving um, and, and Bishop Kelsey obviously saw something in me and he uh, um, appointed me as a district overseer. I became a district overseer uh, um, in, in full gospel. Uh, again, not looking for a title, uh, but just uh, enjoying serving, enjoying being a part of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. Um, was a district overseer for several years for Prince George's County. Um, I, I, I covered Prince George's County for several years. Um, <laughs> Bishop Kelsey was uh, elevated to uh, the executive treasurer position in the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship and um, appointed me. Uh, to be his successor as the state bishop of Washington, D.C. Um, and so uh, I provided leadership uh, as the state bishop for several years. And um, just uh, in, in 2019, uh, Bishop Gavin um, retired as the uh, regional bishop of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship and uh, the uh, Bishop Walker and the Bishop's Council uh, uh, at the recommendation of Bishop Gavin and, of course, my spiritual father, Bishop Kelsey, uh, I was appointed to serve as the regional bishop. So it's been one step at a time, uh, not really looking for, not, look, not really asking for anything, but just knowing the significance of being a part of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship grown so much from being a part of the fellowship, gleaned so much. Uh, my church has grown. Uh, my church has, has gleaned so much from full gospel. And I believe uh, that um, uh, it's, it's the full gospel Baptist church fellowship is a God thing. I believe it. I believe it is God ordained. Um, and I know that St. Stephen's Baptist church, the church that I've been pastoring, for the last 23 years is stronger and healthier because of my connections, uh, because of my association with the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. Hands down, I'm completely convinced. Um, and so that's been the, the that's been the um my my full gospel journey in a nutshell. Thank you, Dr. Evans. Bishop Brown, um, we're coming out of COVID. There's a lot of pastors going through mental health uh, issues. How important it is to have a covering, to have somebody like Bishop Kelsey to talk to when you're going through. After we preach to all of the people and minister to all the people, who ministers to us? Tell us how important it is to have a covering, to, to not be out there by yourself, to be in a fellowship where you can call Bishop Twyman if you're going through something or be somewhere uh, and, and not be alone. Come on, Bishop Brown. Dr. Evans, that's a really an excellent question, even in the season that we're in. When you talk about um, the pandemic and the effects of the pandemic, even, even predating it, um, there's a need for spiritual leaders uh, who lead people to be led and to submit to that leadership. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's odd, it's different, because by by Naturally, we don't pick our parents. We don't do that. The opportunity that we have in praying over a particular person um, and being real fair about that and not looking for, and I may 
get in trouble here, but not looking for different people to be different things to you at different points, having two or three uh, spiritual coverings and pastors and all of that. I, I think that's uh, out there. But I think when you find someone that, number one, that you can submit to, who can speak correction, encouragement, counsel, and celebration, all of those things come in play in having a spiritual covering. And so when you speak of Bishop Kelsey, when you speak of Bishop Twyman, at their, at their level of leadership, uh, having a fellowship that has an opportunity as well so that you might be, that's what a bishop is. He, he's, he leads pastors. And so having uh, that type of example at the top is also is healthy at, at district level, state level, and regional level. And I, I just think that that's uh, a, an excellent question when you talk about mental health and things of that nature, the restoring, the pouring, the revival, the renewal of the mind is essential. And you don't know how profoundly uh, placed that question is in this season. Wow. Thank you, Bishop. That's amazing. Um... I've been in ministry for 37 years. Um, well, longer than that, I've been married 37 years and I was in ministry before I got married. So I stopped counting, you know, after I got to 36, you know, so uh, Bishop Kelsey, I, I wanted to say the same thing to you. You know, a lot of pastors are going through mentally, physically, financially, socially coming out the pandemic and how important it is to have a covering, somebody to talk to and not to be isolated all alone and, and just feel like there's nobody but me in this thing by myself. Bishop Kelsey, come on. Well, Bishop Twyman often publicly states that every pastor needs a pastor. Um, we haven't always been taught that. Traditionally, we we just not we just haven't been taught that, and we haven't seen that modeled. We've seen sonship of, of the church. We're a son of the church. And much of that is traditional and ceremonial. But functional covering, where somebody is committed to serving you, supporting you, guiding you, holding you accountable, We've not been taught that and we've not seen that modeled. And for many of us, it's new. Even if we have been doing it for 15 or 20 years, we're the first generation of preachers to do it, many, many of us. So um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm never not honored to cover the pastors that the Lord has set and sent uh under my leadership i'm i'm i never get used to it i'm it's a, still amazing to me yeah. uh and um and 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 these these bishops here they have sons and daughters uh under their leadership and it's just a cycle of it's a shepherding cycle it's a pastoring cycle uh, that's so different from a posse. Yeah, that's... that's so different from an entrepreneurial move. Yeah. Very, very, just very, very different. Yeah. Um, and I'm doing it because I've seen it. I, 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 Bishop Morton showed me how it's done and why it's important. And so I started trying to show others how it's done and why it's important and praise the lord man glad about it yeah thank you thank you i'm just smiling because i i see every time i talk to bishop time and and you come in his presence it's like a king he's honoring bishop kelsey submits to bishop kelsey um with the highest level of respect and i, I see that and um, Mr. Twyman, is that because that's the person you are or you've grown to be that way or you always known to be submissive to somebody in higher leadership? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, you know, the scriptures are clear when it comes to honor. 
the scriptures are very clear um, uh, when it comes to the responsibility uh, and humility and submission. And um, I've learned, of course, just in, in, in studying the scriptures, in modeling uh, order, divine order. Um, honoring Bishop Kelsey doesn't make me smaller. <laughs> it does not. It. I know who I am, but I also recognize the people that God put in my life to cover me, to pray for me, to encourage me. Um, and when when, it, when you look at the scriptures, um, we have a responsibility to give honor where honor is due. And uh, Bishop Kelsey, uh, I don't have a problem submitting to him because I trust him. Uh, I know that uh, um, he prays for me. And so uh, absolutely. And I think that um, the, the problem is we tell pastors to submit or we tell our congregations to submit to us, but they never see us submit. And uh, again, I believe that that's another part of the health of St. Stephen's because they see me submitting. So when they, when I model it and it's, and again, it ain't pretense. It ain't, you know, Brown knows it. It ain't trying to get a promotion. And that's not what this is about. It is authentic. Um, uh, discipleship, really. Uh, Bishop Kelsey, he, he's been pastoring uh, almost 40 years. I've been pastoring 23. He, he, he's further down, down the line than I am. So, and, and I, I call him, I, there is not a major decision that I've made in my pastorate. And I've had, I've only really had two pastors in my life. Uh, Pastor Harold E. Tremell, that was my pastor who licensed me, baptized me, ordained me, installed me at St. Stephen's, uh, went on to be with the Lord. And um, uh, I, I grieved for about, about a year and a half, maybe even two years, um, because I always had a pastor. I always had a pastor. And uh, even, you know, in pastoring, uh, uh, it's such a blessing uh, to me to have a pastor that I can share things with, that I can, I'm talking about, I'm talking about hard truths, the struggles of my own life. And um, uh, I'll never forget it, even my di uh, divorce and I, I, my, uh, um, my ex-wife, uh, I, I got divorced as a pastor. And that was a very, very rough, challenging time of, of my life. And Bishop Kelsey was there to provide support, to provide encouragement, not to dictate to me what to do. That's the pastors don't do that. Um, but but just providing wise counsel. Uh, and it's always been like that. And so after when, when Pastor Tremel died, the Lord told me that this is your pastor now. Bishop Michael V. Kelsey. And so um, there's, I have never made a major decision in my ministry without talking to my pastor first. I'm talking about uh, stuff from uh, uh, shifting uh, services and, and, and hiring and firing. Are you listening to me? I'm talking about major decisions um, when it comes to the pastorate and, and just, just counsel, just bouncing it off. We need people to talk to. We need, and I believe that a, a pastor is a gift and there's no doubt about it that Bishop Michael V. Kelsey is a gift, not just to the body of Christ, uh, and new, new Samaritan, but to me personally. And, and, and so uh, I bless God for that. And I think that, uh, and, and, and you're right. Every pastor needs a pastor. I know I need a pastor. I know I need one uh, for my own uh, healthy accountability. And so I just wanted to share. Thank you for giving me that opportunity to share. That's big. You know, that's big for all of the means of people watching us right now, that this is a pastor, Bishop Twyman, saying, I have a pastor. 
So everybody watching me right now, if a pastor says, I need a pastor, you need one too. And I want to ask, uh, and I see we, we have a pop-up guest just popped up in for a minute, Bishop uh, Dwayne Freeman. He's our pop-up guest. He's one of our DMV preachers, Doc. You just popped up in here, Dwayne Freeman, <laughs> man. Up, you, hey, look, look, you know, this, this, we, you already told me I'm coming to the full gospel fellowship. You told me that earlier this day. I said, Doc, you coming with me. We're going to pop there. We're going to ride together. We're going to walk over there together. Look, I'm I'm trying to fit I'm trying to figure out how in the world y'all gonna have this this uh conference here. And Twami, he didn't even call me. He didn't call me and tell me nothing uh, about it. Uh, uh. uh I have an art. I know he just started talking about humility, and uh <laughs> it's a very humble man to be able to say, I need a pastor too. And awesome as he is, and he said he humbled himself for a pastor, man. But now I got an art against him. He ain't let me know about the thing, man. Freeman, I'm calling you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you know I called you, Doc. You I, I, <laughs> yeah, I had to call. I had to call the bishop today and say, "Hey, man, they tell me that y'all coming in town." And he said, "Yeah, we be we be in town next week, so I'm I'm gonna be down there. I don't know what day, but I know I'm gonna come down there." and uh be with y'all i know it's gonna be an awesome awesome uh time of fellowship getting in the word and uh i want to just be a part of that man Amen. And, and this is one of the things we said pastors outside the organization coming pastor Dwayne freeman and apostle mike freeman we, we're brothers man not just friends we're brothers and i asked them to come on tonight bishop kelsey i want to ask you a question yes sir when you have Bishop Twyman submitting to you. You have members also submitting to you, but this is another man who's a bishop and a pastor. Do you give him that same amount of ten, uh, uh, um, same amount of attention, same amount of respect, if he calls you there, you there for him? The only difference in attention uh, that I give the sons and daughters I cover compared to the members of the church. The only difference in attention is that I preach to the members every week and I don't preach to sons and daughters every week. That is the difference. Outside of that, I am absolutely as available to our sons and daughters. And uh, I have wondered sometimes how my members <laughs> feel, about that, feel about that, but um, I have, I, it is a reality, and they understand that reality. Um, and I suppose, yeah, that's my answer to that question. Um, unless Bishop Twyman and Bishop Edwin say, Mo Brown says, I, no, I don't know if that's true, Bishop Kelsey, but <laughs> I think it's true. <laughs> oh, you're very balanced, ba very balanced. I think your answer fits the question. We get we get it once a month. Once yeah, a month, yeah. Yeah. we have a, a conference call yeah. with the sons and daughters uh, that Bishop Kelsey covers, and it's about an hour, hour and a half sometimes. But he's always challenging us, teaching us, giving us additional principles. Again, he he way down the line, a farther along in ministry than I am, um, but uh, the, the 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 principles. The, 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 the challenges that he gives up to us as it pertains to our pastorate, um, getting us to think about stuff that we hadn't even really thought about, such as rest. And he, he, he did a teaching on conflict resolution one time, really how to deal with, with, with challenging leadership in yeah. your church. He's, he's given us basic, some, some powerful nuggets that I've implemented a lot of that stuff at St. Stephen's. And again, it, it is what it is. And I'm, and again, I'm not putting him on a pedestal, um, but, but I think that that is, there's a lost art of honor in our communities anyway. Mm. And I think that we need to restore that mm. and it can be restored. I think when it does start at the head mm -hmm. um, and it does trickle down. Amen. And, and Dr. Evans, what I want to say is, well, I think I may be trying to get this, me off the focus 
off the, the focus off of me. But I, I, what I want to say, really, everything we're talking about is full gospel. It really, it really is. It's not just isolated in this relationship that I have with these two bishops. It is. It's been cultivated through the culture of full gospel. It just, it's, we see this everywhere in full. This is how we do it. This, this is how we do it. Doesn't mean that everybody does it, but we have a culture that gets it in terms of order and honor and fellowship and relationship and accountability. And accountability is not a dirty word in full gospel. Amen. It's a biblical principle that'll bless you. Um, is, is what I want want to say. Um, and, and let me let me just say this, and 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 I know we're going to be wrapping up in a minute, but let me just say, what comes to my mind is that full gospel is more than an annual conference. That's that's the point. Both presiding Bishop Walker and founder Bishop Morton, both of them have, have impressed that upon each of us, that full gospel is more than an annual conference. Now that's easier said than done in terms of manifesting, but, but, it's, but it's constantly promoted that, uh, that we seek to operate in kingdom balance, in kingdom balance. Our four pillars of our, uh, uh, the vision of Bishop Walker is uh, uh, number one, faith, number two, family, number three, fitness, number four, finance. It has to do with kingdom balance. Um, and, and in terms of this conference coming up, we did not want it to just be a 30 year episode of celebration in DC because full gospel is more than an annual conference. So we're about global missions as well as home missions. Both are very important. One doesn't get lost in the sauce of the other. Um, so we partner with organizations that help us accomplish that kind of kingdom balance. Um, and, and we all know, you know, we, 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 we've done global missions for years. All of us have at some level or another. Um, uh, but we, we know how easy it is to forget about the, the brothers and sisters right around the corner uh, from our church while we seek to reach the brothers and sisters in Liberia. Uh, so we, we, we partner with uh, an organization called Compassion International. It's an international child discipleship organization. Uh, and uh, it's one of the world's largest and fastest growing Christian child development organizations uh, on the planet. Um, and uh, they do some things just amazingly effective. And so Full Gospel discovered that. They discovered Full Gospel and found out that our vision and mission agree in remarkable ways. So we got a strong partnership with them uh, that, that uh, touches children all around the globe in deep poverty situations. Uh, and, 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 and so we adopt, we call it spiritual adoption. It's not the regular adoption like in America, but spiritual adoption of children that is very, very balanced and very, very biblical where they, uh, uh, compassion says they're Christ-centered, child-focused and church-based. There's no other organization that I have discovered that honors the church like compassion does and doesn't try to take it over and make it American. Um, my wife and I have adopted two uh, spiritual daughters, Giovanna in, in Ecuador, South America, and Rogate in Togo, West Africa. And we've done it, it, it it's been six years now that we've adopted them and they've just grown and grown and grown. And so compassion is coming next week to partner to make sure that our global missions outreach continues to be strong and vibrant and relative, I mean, and relevant, uh, but not only global missions, but home missions. Um, we're having next week what we call an urban service project. Uh, 
and, and so that means uh, delegates are not just coming from around the country and sing and shout a, in a hotel and, and, and make Gaylord rich. No, 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 no. We're, we're strategic and intentional about um, compassion both. We call it compassion here and there, global and, and home. And so we're going over to Kimball Elementary School on Minnesota Avenue in Southeast DC, um, not exactly known as, you know, the Gaylord of DC. Uh, and, and that's why we're go <laughs> that's why we're going. Bishop Freeman is laughing. That's why we're that's why we're going um, because we think it's very important. We're bringing five thousand pounds of food over there because we realize that many of the children are coming to school hungry. Uh, many of the children are coming to school because that's the only place they can come to, to get something to eat. We're bringing 200 school uniforms that are just for Kimball uh, Elementary. Uh, we're bringing supplies for their STEM program. They tell me it's, it's not STEM. STEM anymore. Put an A in there. STEAM. 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 Yeah, they added arts. All right. Um, uh, and, and speaking of mental health and, and emotional health, we're supplying 26 classrooms with what they call calming stations. Just mental health. What's my point? My point is we're, we're much more than an annual conference, but we seek to be about kingdom balance. And uh, we're excited about it. I hope th those of you who are watching, I hope that you will get on over there to the Gaylord uh, and uh, and experience this kingdom balance that we're talking about in a marvelous, marvelous way. We'd love to have you. Wow, that, that was amazing. Uh, when you hear Bishop Kelsey unfolds, not just the program or the service at the Full Gospel Baptist Fellowship, because he works behind the scenes and he knows things like that. I never thought that, you, that everybody would be going over there. I never thought you'd be going downtown to the public officials. This is big. Um, right. I, I serve at different events uh, like the Mental Health of America. I, I was with them and also for people who um, at, on Capitol Hill for affordable housing. And I know how it is to step out of that, that, that arena of the church and go to sit in meetings with people who are building homes and sitting in meetings on Capitol Hill. And I want to applaud you, Bishop Kelsey, for stating that and helping the kids. And Bishop Twyman, you know how it is to feed people because St. Stephen's every Tuesday, Wednesday, went Tuesday, winter, spring, summer, and fall for the last 10 or 15 years, and especially during COVID, have exploded in helping families, which is the largest food distribution in the DMV. Before we close, Bishop Twyman, can you talk a little bit about your beautiful 100 staff out there feeding people from all walks of life? And I often ask you this, and you know I do. I say, is it only for the Baptist folks? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, we're excited. Um, of course, every Tuesday, um, we, we're excited about being able to feed uh literally thousands of families every Tuesday. Um, there's a line uh, on Temple Hill Road that, that starts around seven in the morning. People are actually getting in line. So there's a, a real need. We're excited about the, the partnerships with the Capital Area Food Bank, Trader Joe's, Target, and Wonder Bread. And, and we just got a new partner, Aldi's. Um, and every every Tuesday, we're, we're feeding uh it, it, it's chicken, sometimes it's pork chops, it's potatoes, cabbage, uh, eggs, milk, all kinds of uh, staples that uh, families need uh, to really subsidize the community. Uh, we're excited about it. The partnerships uh, continue and there's a real need. Uh, if um, you, you, you don't get in line at seven o'clock in the morning, if, if there's not a real genuine need. Um, so we're averaging um, somewhere around three to 4,000 families uh, that we're feeding every 
every Tuesday. And so we've got a, a great, strong volunteer base. Uh, the majority of our members are St. Stephen's, but some are not uh, that really want to help the community. Um, so we're doing that. I know, uh, Dr. Evans, you've been through, you, you, you've got some great footage uh, and everybody has a story. Um, I met uh, one lady, uh, she was 90 years old. And her husband uh, is 92, um, was on dialysis. And um, she was in that line uh, waiting. And we told her, okay, you don't ever have to wait in this line anymore. Uh, we've got a seniors pickup on the other side, on the top side for seniors. So, so um, they don't have to wait. They can, they can come on the front side of the top side. But again, um, the, the, the stories are amazing. And you just never know what people are going through. And if a person has to make a decision on whether to purchase their medicine or to buy their food, um, we've given them uh, the, the, the blessing of they don't have to, 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 to make that choice. They can get the food from us and get their med and actually pay for their medicine. So, again, uh, we're excited about doing we're going to continue to do it as long as the resources are there. Uh, and we know that the need is 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 consistent. Jesus said, "The poor, you're gonna have what you always." So, uh, we, we bless God that we're able to serve. Yeah, I want to come back, and we're gonna talk about that on the next segment, folks. I've been working with Bishop Twyman and the mobile food distribution for the last four years, or oh, well, longer than that. Um, but there's one family I cannot stop this broadcast and say the lady who was across the street from the church, she was um, getting food for you. Well, you can tell that story better than I can. Come on, Bishop Twine. Um, I'm not sure what story you're talking about. Yeah, it was a lady who was getting food. She was she was getting in this line getting food for like two years across the street from your church, and finally she came and joined joined the uh, church. Yeah. Okay. Right. 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 Yeah. Um. Yeah. There. There's. Uh. There's a senior that she had been coming. Um. And it was. It was very, um, it, it was a God thing because we, we were baptizing um, on, on one Sunday and she was there. I didn't even know she was there, but um, I opened it up. She wasn't scheduled to be baptized. I opened it up and I said, anybody that loves God and never been baptized, wants to be baptized, wants to give their life to Jesus Christ, come forward. We had already baptized about three or four people. Um, and I had opened it up and she came forward and said, you know, and she told the story of how she had been coming. And uh, she says, I want to be baptized and I want to join St. Stephen's. I believe the day is a day that the Lord wants me to join. And she joined and we baptized her on the spot, you know, so that's the that's that's the apostolic in me, I guess. <laughs> we, 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 we ain't doing no new members classes. Do you believe Jesus Christ is the son of God? <laughs> and and we, we put him in the water. And so we did that. And that was a, a powerful story. She's a wonderful, wonderful woman of God who's still with us. So we're going we're gonna to close out this broadcast. Um, I want all of these pastors and bishops to come on and have their own show on the Pick TV network because the Gospel Life channel is exploding. You know, I make TV shows, commercials. We have a, a movie, a mini movie, Miracle Tuesday, shot on the premises of the St. Stephen's Baptist Church. If you haven't seen it, you need to go on YouTube and check it out. Miracle Tuesdays, because we see miracles on that lot every Tuesday when those people get food from all walks of life. And I'm talking about people from all races, creeds, colors, background, religions, and a staff of 100 people out there under a tent getting food. It's a beautiful sight. And I want to thank you. Bishop Kelsey, I, I can't say thank you enough for coming on today on the set. Sure. And um, you were the first one here. So you know time management. I got I, I mean, you were the you were here. We started 9 o'clock, Doc. You here at 8.30, man. I was like, Bishop is the first one here. <laughs> so when you have your show on the Pick TV Network, your own show, your own, you got to do that. You got to talk about time management. You, you're a leader, and I, I, I love you so much. But but when we go to the restaurant again, man, those ribs you ate, Doc. I mean, man, I was like, I had my chicken. I had all my stuff out there. When I seen yours, 
I see it a lot. <laughs> well, actually, I, I got word that I would get a chance to meet Bishop Freeman. So that's why that's really why I got so early. No, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> here listening to you all, man. And uh, all roads should be leading to the National Harbor next week. I mean, just to listen to the love and the honor that y'all have demonstrated. Um, and it, I mean, it goes up. It, I mean, you're talking about Bishop Walker, Bishop Morton, and it's coming down and you guys are embracing it. You know, everybody don't embrace that same kind of culture, but you guys have embraced that. And, yeah. and it's amazing. I've been looking at this double honor and I found out if there's a such thing, a double honor, there's a such thing as a single honor. The single honor is commanded by God for us to honor everybody. Mm -hmm. But double honor is something that I want to because I found a leader that knows how to rule well. And now I want to because you made an impact in my life. And I'm telling you, just sitting here listening, you guys, uh, just uh, uplifting and honoring each other, then honoring your leader. Uh, I'm definitely going to be there. And everybody that's watching this, I'm telling you, you want to be in that kind of culture, that kind of atmosphere. And on top of that, the word of the living God is going to be shared. That's going to change your life. You want to be at that particular meeting on next week. Hey, Bishop, I love you, man. Thank you for all that you're doing. And, uh, man, you're helping uh, Bishop Twyman, man. I tell you, uh, it's, just, it's just amazing to see how God connects people and cause increase in promotion to come through each other's lives through it. So I'm glad I was on here uh, for the time that I was on here. Thank you, uh, Bishop Bishop David. <laughs> man, man, I'm the servant, man. Listen, um, we're going to let the bishops go, and we're going to do part two. We're going to come back on um, after this broadcast. Don't go nowhere. I have a special preacher from California. Bishop Noel Jones sent another preacher on, and Bishop Clark is down there. We're going to bring him on the second set, and we're going to talk a little bit, though. So, and we're going to bring Bishop Mike Freeman on also. And if, any, if you want to come back, Bishop, uh, either one, any of the bishops want to come back, you can come back on, on our segment too, right after we get off of this broadcast. I want to thank Bishop Twyman. Thank you, sir. You, man, you, man. You're, you're a good man. All roads are going to lead to the Gaylord at National Harbor on the 5th through the 7th for the Full Gospel Baptist Fellowship. This is a great 30th anniversary, folks. We'll never see this again, the 30th anniversary. Bishop Kelsey, can you give the lineup one more time for the people who came in a little late? You know. All right. The lineup is uh, that Wednesday, the 5th, we start out with Bishop Edwin Brown at uh, 3, what time, Bishop Brown? 6.40? I believe so. At 6.40 p.m., uh, and uh, then our founders, Bishop Carlos Malone, Kenneth Almer, Andy Luter, uh, uh, will will greet us with the founders' experience. Bishop Simon Gordon will start off Wednesday night uh, from Chicago, Illinois, with the preaching of the Word of God. Then on Thursday, we start out with Church Fit. Uh, I told you balance is the order of the day at Full Gospel. Uh, church fit starts early at 6.30 a.m. Not sure if Bishop Edwin Brown will be there, uh, but uh, others, will be, <laughs> others, will, <laughs> others will be present. Uh, and then our um, we will have a prayer encounter at 9 o'clock, which is so important to our fellowship uh, that we center everything we do around our time with the Lord. Uh, as we hear from him and he hears from us. Uh, and then on at 11.30, uh, we will hear Pastor Diamond Gant, uh, who will be the preacher for the gathering at 11.30, uh, followed by uh, the uh, founding father's moment. Again, Bishop A.R. Williams, Larry Trotter, J.D. Wiley, and our co-founder leading us into the night gathering with Bishop Paul S. Morton, Founders Night, Thursday night, Bishop Morton will be preaching. And then Friday, uh, we will have what's called Live Full X, or Live Full X, rather, at 10 a.m. with Bishop T.D. Jakes. 
Uh, he will be talking about mastering the intersections of ministry and marketplace. Uh, so very, very important. The gathering at 1130 with Bishop Walter Scott Thomas uh, bringing the word of God. Uh, we will have uh, Pastor Benjamin Haley bringing the voices uh, from the region at 1140. And then we have what's called emerging churches. Those are the smaller churches. Uh, back to this issue of honor. We honor pastors of every size church. So much so until we have a ch emerging churches luncheon set aside just to honor the pastors of what we call emerging uh, churches at 130. But also the caravan of justice you heard me speak of uh, um, moving out from Mount Enon uh, Baptist Church onto Capitol Hill uh, with our political agenda of full gospel never have happened before. Founding Father's Moment again, Bishop Greg Davis and Kenneth Robinson leading us into Bishop um, uh, Joseph Walker's night. He'll be preaching at seven o'clock for presiding Bishop's night, and we will wrap up with that service. Matter of fact, there is a signature event late that night. You know, people got to hang out at the end, 1030 p.m., uh, with the worship service, Grammy Dove and Stella nominated and award-winning artist, Vashon Mitchell. Man, that thing is packed. You won't, no matter what time you come, what day you come, it's going to be something wonderful for each of you. By the way, bring your young people, children and youth. There's something incredibly crazy planned for the children and youth every single day. You'd be amazed at how children come back saved and spirit-filled from Yo, being a part yeah. of uh, the full gospel experience. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. This is it. We're going to play this all week on repeat on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitch, Twitter, all social media platforms all week long. So you want to take the link, send it to everybody, let everybody see this. Let's pack out the Gaylord Hotel, folks. Let's go over there and bring everybody. Let's have a good time. The food is going to be great. The fellowship is going to be great. You're in a five-star location. Hang out. Meet the bishop. Tell them how much you're in love and enjoy them on this big TV network special broadcast. We're going to come back on part two, folks. Don't go anywhere. Thank you for your time. God bless. <laughs> This is Marty Mangello at the United States Presidential Service Center. Uh, coming to you from having served six presidents now. And Dr. David Evans is doing a fantastic job with the PIC TV network. Uh, be sure to check out all the offerings on PIC TV. Go crazy. You know, hit up about 10, 20, 30, 40 channels. Uh, the more support, the more watching, the more it grows, the better it does. And it is doing good, isn't it? It's a great thing that we all need more of in this world. Thank you so much, and don't forget, Think Pick TV.
everybody, you made it to the end of another broadcast. Don't forget the full Gospel Baptist Fellowship is coming your way. That's right. Washington, D.C. is proud to embrace the full Gospel Baptist Fellowship at the Gaylord Hotel. It is the 30th anniversary, folks, July the 5th through the 7th. You don't want to miss it. You just heard from Bishop Bishop uh, uh, Lanier Twyman is working hard behind the scenes. Bishop Kelsey is working hard behind the scenes. Bishop Brown been working hard behind the scenes to make everybody feel welcome in the DMV. We cannot wait to see Bishop Walker and also Bishop Morton, all of the bishops and all of the elders and all of this constituents and people coming from all over the world to this conference. It's major for the DMV and I can't wait. I'm gonna be there every service. I wanna thank everybody for watching this broadcast. Please push it out, Pick TV Network, proud to bring you this presentation today and we support the Full Gospel Baptist Fellowship. I'll see you at the Gaylord Hotel. Thanks for your time. They say your eyes are the windows to the soul. They're also the windows to your health because they let eye doctors see what's going on inside. Think about this. A comprehensive eye exam can be an early detector of serious health problems like high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. Shouldn't you see your eye doctor yearly? Go to thinkaboutyoureyes.com to learn more and for a list of local eye doctors.